18. Hello, welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Luthra. The COP26 climate conflict is upon us. Egypt's Sharm el Sheikh will be hosting the pivotal summit mandated by the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Ahead of that, the UN has warned that the global effort to cut emissions is woefully inadequate and means the world is on track for catastrophe. The summit also comes at a time when the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war and Russia pulling the plug on energy supplies has thwarted developed countries' march towards green energy transition. Just 26 of the 193 countries that agreed to step up their climate action have followed through with more ambitious plans. Environment Minister Bhupendra Yadav would be leading the Indian delegation to Egypt. India would be demanding action in terms of climate finance, technology transfer, capacity building for developed countries in its fight against climate change. To take this discussion forward, I'm now joined by Faustine De La Salle, Vice Chair at Energy Transition Commission. Uh, Faustine, let me begin by asking you, what can the COP27 realistically achieve? And what really has been the progress made since COP26 on the ambition on uh, some of the commitments that were made in UK? Look, I think what happened in the UK is that a number of countries raised their national commitments and then a number of corporates and financial institutions also made strong commitments uh, to ramp up ambition in terms of CO2 emissions reduction. What unfortunately hasn't happened that much since then is uh, the development of implementation plans to ensure that countries and corporates actually achieve the commitments that they've made. And so that's really what I'm expecting from uh, COP27 this year in Egypt, is to uh, ensure that uh, we back the ambitions we have, we back the promises with plans and with pots of money that will enable us to make progress. Right. Uh, also to ask you, how has the Ukraine-Russia war really diverted the attention of countries from meeting climate action goals? I think it's been twofold. Um, on the one hand, obviously, there's the immediate constraint and the immediate worries about uh, the uh, energy crisis that has triggered some increased use uh, of coal and of gas, including in Europe. Uh, where uh, the tendency was very much towards lower fossil fuels use in, in the past. Um, but what has also happened is that higher fossil fuels prices uh, make renewables even more competitive than they already were. And, and I'm sure we've noticed that in India as well, that the cost of renewables is coming down and compared to uh, the cost of fossil fuels is making even more sense than before in terms of an investment opportunity. And so uh, my hope is that both on the renewable deployment front and the energy efficiency front, we'll see the pace of change accelerating. And I think we're also seeing it accelerate in terms of the deployment of electric vehicles. And India is probably leading the charge on that front with, with very um, great increases over the past year. Okay. Uh, the... International Energy Agency estimates that EU's coal consumption rose by 10% in the first six months of 22, driven mostly by electricity demand and will continue to increase as winter nears. With this context, can we really expect COP27 to make any significant progress? It is going to be difficult. Um, there will be, I think, signals of hope in a certain uh, number of areas. The fact that uh, Brazil and Lula in particular will be around the table with for probably be a positive signal, for instance, uh, for uh, deforestation. Um, but um, we, I, I am quite realistic and, and perhaps pessimistic about what can really be achieved in Egypt specifically, um, because countries will indeed have uh, other matters on their minds. And so that reinforces the need for continued action beyond COP, in between the COPs. Uh, at country level and at corporate level to continue to, to increase um, the, the pace of change uh, in, in our economies. Okay, uh, let me also ask you about some of India's concerns. India is going with a message that we need a clear definition on climate financing and how finance is going to be disseminated as well. Uh, do you think there will be some clarity, some greater commitments from the developed world? on this issue? It is my hope. I mean, it is um, 
the thing that the developed world really has to commit to this year uh, is to help low income countries and emerging countries uh, change at pace and transition at pace. And there are things for which you don't need international finance flows, right? Um, for instance, investment in renewable capacity, wind and solar, does not necessarily require um, support from developed countries to developing countries. But things like early phase out of coal uh, represent a financial burden uh, that countries like India need to be helped with. And so we've estimated uh, in, in our ETC calculation that about $300 billion um, dollars that need to be spent every year by developed economies to support this transition in developing economies, mostly focused on phase out of coal, um, putting an end to deforestation and increasing negative um, emissions. Uh, and and uh, that's really what we're pushing for this year. Uh, I'm hopeful that developed countries will understand that this is not just a matter of uh, historical responsibility. It is a matter of saving the environment, which can't be done without uh, emerging countries and low-income countries on board. Right. Uh, uh, $100 billion in climate financing. This is what uh, previous meetings of the COP have committed to. A lot of this has not been delivered to countries like India and other, other nations in the Indian subcontinent. Give us a sense of the kind of financing that we would need annually if we need to shift, for, shift from coal and also meet uh, the targets. So overall, the investment required in the uh, energy transition is in the order of three trillion per year. But most of that can come from private capital because it is, it is good investment to invest in renewables. It is good investment to invest in batteries. It is good investment to invest in the electric vehicles, the supply chain. And so uh, there's only some specific dimensions of the energy transition that really requires public finance either to help kickstart uh, some um, industries and some technologies that are still early stage, for instance, in terms of industry decarbonization, hydrogen development, or to do things that by nature are uh, not going to be mo money making for invent investors, like closing coal plants earlier than they would on their normal life cycle. And that's really where we need to focus the money that can come from international public finance. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Faustine, for joining us with uh, the Energy Transition Commission's uh, view on COP27 and what it can really achieve. We're going to take a short break, but uh, coming up, recession bug bites big tech companies. Major players trim their workforce, including Twitter, which plans to prune 50% of its workforce. Details on the other side.